Um, I just wanted to have us go through, uh, I put together this presentation for a specific two things. One is that the, if you recall, that the uh, legislators came to our meeting mm -hmm. and, uh, and they wanted to know what it is that we are concerned with. And I think that the superintendent uh, mentioned about chins and so forth mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, and there are other issues that uh, that uh, we need to acquaint them with. That's uh, uh, that's one of the purposes of this. And the other reason is that some of these things are impacting how we develop our budget in terms of budget numbers. So I felt that we ourselves should uh, put our arms around, and on top of that, we. Should need to we need to communicate this to the outside world so that they understand what it is that we are grappling with in terms of funding the school. Um, so today uh, I'm not going to take long. It's it's fairly uh, smooth flowing. I think um, what I'm going to talk about uh, budget and local tax impact, New Hampshire retirement system, and how that's impacting us. Uh, it is not an indictment on why we should be paying. It is what it is. Is if you recall a few years ago, that the state legislature said that they will not be funding 35 percent that they used to fund, and they threw that down to zero, which resulted in um, uh, cost uh, uh, blowback onto the districts <coughs> and the municipalities. Uh, that's that's what I'm covering there, and then the state adequacy education grant, which puts Hampton in a very unique place. You will see Hampton is getting minuscule amount compared to the rest of the districts, and I will follow. I'll give you a, uh, an example of that. And then finally, the, the state and federal school lunch mandates. We have been grappling with the school lunch issue, and as you can see, this uh, in this handout. If you can look at those pictures that uh, Nathan has provided, we are talking about uh, about 2,000 to 2,500 lunch gap. And, uh, and while at the same time, the state and federal mandates in terms of what to serve, how to serve, when to serve, how much of it, what the content needs to be, puts us in a bind. So we are not in a position to adjust to the, to the realities of the student population and, and therefore we are constrained that way. So, why should we care about it? Because they play a significant role in our operating budget and our local taxes. Plus we need to, uh, we need to get, a, uh, get a grip on this uh, so that we ourselves know what's happening. Uh, the impact of New Hampshire state uh, retirement system, state contribution 35% was legislated to 0%. The retirement system currently is about underfunded by about 50%. You are take a percent or two. Uh, state used to contribute 35% towards it. Now, now the state is zero that out in order to balance its budget. At least that's what the press was. Uh, and therefore, it has essentially forced the municipalities to absorb it. Um, the other thing is the state has been calculating, the retirement system has been calculating benefits on the basis of 8.5% of actuarial return, which is somewhat unrealistic. Uh, however, they have, uh, they have reduced that, uh, and as a result, they, the reduction resulted in the uh, cost increases to the employers and the employees. I might add the employees are also forced into that situation. Uh, what is the impact on Hampton schools on this? I don't know whether you can see it clearly, but anyhow, this is a graph which shows, by the way, this is both certified and non-certified. So there is a percentage difference, but from gross perspective, if you look at, this is starting with 2003-2004, right up to 2013-14. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see what the retirement system payments have been both when we were part of SAU 21 as well as now uh, at SAU 90. You can see on the top right hand side, I have written state contribution went from 35% to zero plus actuarial adjustment. So those are the periods starting 2010-11 to, to now. I think it has stabilized now because they, there is no more increase. Yeah, they took out everything they wanted to take out. Yeah. The other thing, though, is you see, yeah. uh, 11, 12 to 12, 13, yeah. fairly stable. That's yeah. a biennium, so yeah. our percentage didn't change over right. our salaries. Yeah. You'll see it be flat again, essentially, yeah. in the 14, 15, right. who knows? Right. <laughs> now, I drew a line to illustrate what the natural progression of the payments have been prior to them making the adjustment. So you see that line that runs yeah. across. And I also drew a line, if, if that were the case with 35% being funded by the state, we would end up somewhere around uh, $900,000 or so. Yeah. And whereas we are now close to 1.4 million, 1.339 something, 38. So it's a $440,000 impact. This is what we have to come up with in our operating budget. That's the, that's the purpose of this um, uh, chart. I really have a hard time with the ethics of what they did. Um, the hell with the ethics, so I have a hard time coming up with the goal. Uh, in fact, uh, the, this is, the, what I did is, this is calculated as a municipality, not just as an SAU. Uh, what I superimpose here is the same chart as before, starting from 2003 to 2003 to 2004, budget year stretching to 2013-14, but put on it is the Hampton portion of the uh, Winnicott High School. It's a 45% is what we pay, and if you add that on, that's what you see the, uh, the white and dark shaded bars are. And I went through the same process as I did before, what the natural progression of increase has been. And if that were to continue with 35% contribution from the state where we would be versus where we are now, that's a $600,000 impact. So you're saying our 400 from SAU 90 and 200 from SAU 20? Correct. Plus. Yeah. So it's the same. Plus. Yeah, right. Now, if you add, as I said, these are all calculated based on municipalities, not just districts. So now, you take into account the town. Uh, by the way, this data comes from uh, courtesy of uh, Dick Nichols, uh, Board of Selectmen. I requested that uh, give me the data. But anyhow, you can see the light charts on top of the dark ones. That is what the, the town uh, impact is. It's the same chart going from the same period of time. And the, you can see the slope that's going up if the, the, the state had to work to continue at 35% where we would be. And however, where we are now, that that difference, that chunk, is now $1.2 million in total. So that means the taxpayers of Hampton combined on all the, uh, the uh, budgets, operating expenses, we added $1.2 million to their bottom line. Right. School and municipality. Yes. And that doesn't account for, I, I won't steal No, 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 that's all right. But that doesn't even account for the, the employee contribution. Right. That's, the, that's right. the employer, that's the taxpayer's contribution. Yes. All those employees are kicking in as well. Uh, exactly right. Exactly right. right. It, it, exactly. A million and a half, maybe? Yeah. No. Uh, it's it's equal, uh, equal opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now I want to switch gear to tell you about, I think some of you know this already, State Adequacy of Education Grant, um, and we appraised uh, Senator Stiles about this uh, last time, uh, and um, there's obviously uh, people that are uh, on the good side don't want to upset the apple cart, uh, basically. The calculation formula essentially penalizes Hampton. Hampton receives about $74 per student. It's one of the lowest in the state. I listed here some of the other ones. 
and I tell you why I listed them in a, in a minute. Stratum receives $1,194 per student. Amherst receives $1,914 per student. Exeter receives $2,034 per student. There is no consideration here to affordability. What I mean by that, you look at median income, household income. Hampton is about 69,028 according to the census data. And the same census data says Amherst and Stratum are 105,000 and 118,000, about one and a half or one and three quarter times that. Exeter obviously is 61,361. So there's no relationship to that. It's basically based on the um, property valuation. Uh, we, 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 there is no donor town staying, but it is just the same in the sense that the absence of payment is by absence of payment from the state to, uh, to, the, to the town. Now, this is, a, this is a plot of a state adequacy fund. We get about $130,000, and you can see the, these are in millions. Okay, there, there is about a handful of them. The significance of that is Claremont, which essentially brought the original suit that resulted in all those uh, machinations, uh, they received well over $14,000, uh, I mean $14 million as, uh, as a student aid. Uh, so this, this tells you the story in terms of where Hampton is in relation to the, all the others. Oh, it drives our costs up. Yes, we pay, we pay for all the uh, education out of our own pocket. That's what it means. And it's driven strictly by evaluation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. Northampton Rock, did you have any, did you notice any? Uh, I, I, I did, uh, but uh, they, they, uh, they are better than us, but I, they are not a whole lot of better okay. than us. Right. Rye, Here. Northampton, and uh, Hampton Falls. They are better than $74. Our problem really is the beach valuation. Right. We have $2.7 billion worth of value, uh, valuation, and that essentially is where the issue is. Somebody who isn't concerned with this, who knows the legislation, yeah. one of the comments that they would make is they would say, this only concerns your, this, you're only concerning yourself right now with the grants, they would want to stack on top of every one of these lines the statewide education property tax that's collected yes. locally yes. and stays here yes. in the name of the state, yes. which is essentially still your money being raised locally. Right. Right. They, they tell you how much, you, tell you, how much you would raise and then you can keep it. But yes. They would say that that's because our statewide property tax is in excess of $4 million uh -huh. for... Well, anyway, yes. it, it, I think it evens, the, it evens the field with some of them, if you see yeah. that. Yeah. But unfortunately, that falls on deaf ears with, you know, with many folks, because I, I remember as many times as I've had the opportunity to editorialize, I've always said, the state can put their name on that if they want, but it's really your money raised locally. Exactly. And if they took the label off it, yeah. you'd still raise it locally to find the same thing here. Exactly. exactly. But they tell you how much. How much it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it is not up to the local people. It's not. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is this is a plot, <coughs> somewhat complicated, but just look at the picture in that it is uh, it, it, it is eight per student in hundreds of dollars, and then household income. It's a it's an attempt to show where the household income is and where Hampton is in terms of uh, in, in terms of. So if you look at all the gray colors, that tells you relatively where the uh, the uh, median income is. And then the ones in the dark will show what the adequacy grant is, and you can see where Hampton is. I can see it. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's, it's there. Yeah, it's there, but the, the, the scale has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's overwhelmed by the scale. The local taxpayers are subsidized school budget. You know this. Uh, used to be 60k or more. Now I think it is. Uh, less than 20K, I think you do essentially management that we brought these people in, uh, did a uh, business audit of it and so forth. And I'm glad we did it. I think we did a very nice job on that. But while we are doing that, the 
the, the rug is already pulled out from under our feet. And where it happens is the nutrition requirement, it's a highly micromanaged system. It added six cents per meal while the cost is far more. It's got a negative in, impact on consumption. Uh, uh, kids don't like them. This is not just Hampton. There are many districts. Some of them are opt trying to opt out nationwide out of the system because they can't they can't make the kids eat. Um, come down initiative to reduce cost of lunches. The school lunches served now has gone down close to 20 percent in the last few years. Some duty enrollment. But the problem that we see is here's a mandate that is given but not compensated for. Basically, we are forced to, to accept whatever the cost structure that comes out of it without any recourse. That, again, shows up in our budget. Now, this, is a, this, is, this, is, this may not be uh, uh, ex extremely related, but it is tangential. Uh, rooms and meals tax, it's a town issue, but in fact school funding. Hampton generates major share of the state revenue in this category, and again it receives less because it is based on population spread rather than anything else. So <coughs> calculating formula is, uh, is put us on, uh, behind the eight ball again. The, uh, the bottom line, state provides very little assistance to Hampton and forced local taxpayer to show with a mandate without any recourse results in indirect taxation. Basically, this message really, this last, is for legislators to think about how they can do something about this. Uh, where, uh, uh, I know that when you are in a minority amongst the, the population that's receiving, they're not, they don't want to change. However, there may be other ways to skin that cat. Uh, so that's basically why I, I wanted to put this out, because a lot of people don't know, particularly outside world, do not know that the Hampton is funding its own school district, its own um, uh, uh, town, and everything else um, at uh, better than 95%. So that's where I was uh, with regard to this presentation. Are the legislators due to come in again soon? Or? That, I don't know. Are they, um, but, but yeah, I don't want to represent it. To yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Put it right in the front burner, right in front of them. But I think I brought up the other point is you're talking about five people versus 474 yeah, right. in the legislature. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, they can yeah. make holler, scream, and yell, but yeah. if they can't get something it's right. It's I mean, they start somewhere. They yeah. start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Maybe people will listen. But well, maybe Nancy tried um, to, to get the uh, to get a bigger share of the meals yeah. and rooms tax. And, you know, that money that comes in as a result of that to the state is distributed to all the towns and all the representatives of the towns. So when that, come, population. When that comes up for a vote, it's an overwhelming no, yeah. we're not going to change. That, that is not just Hampton. It's also Portsmouth. Right. And our, yeah. the Speaker of the House is from Portsmouth. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, no, I mean, there's no, there are all these small towns that are just, you know, that are using this income. It's vital to them, and they're not getting one yeah. But one thing they can correct, one thing they can correct is they can reinstitute the 35% oh. uh, that they would prove. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's great. If you, if you look at it and you sit back and you think. <laughs> I just feel that that's added more pressure on the management of the town and the school system to yeah. keep a tight and prudent budget uh, while all of these machinations are going on. You know, we're in a very dynamic era where you know the retirements have been pulled away and and uh, the adequacy funds aren't what they should be, and etc. So all the more reason why the pressure is really on us both at the town level and at the school board level yeah. to keep these things as prudent as we can. Governance. And we are. Where are we now,